Okay, after this fateful day, I was glad to finally have some sort of respite. I wandered into the kitchen and as I considered tonight's dinner. Should I cook something or order out? When I returned to the living room, I suddenly found my strength leaving me and I collapsed. <laughs> what the hell? That's not good. Oh, bam. <laughs> uh, the next thing I saw was a blurry stone ceiling. As my eyesight slowly returned, I managed to sit up. I was in a cave, and before me stood a familiar, mysterious face. I apologise for the violence, but I can assure you it was the easiest way. Uh, sure. Is this your hideout? It's just a temporary accommodation, so we can be undisturbed for this meeting. Someone else used to live here until recently. Do you know who I am? Well, you're not Reza. Good. What did it take to, for you to figure that out? Since you're not whispering anymore, I can hear it clearly in your voice. I had a feeling that you couldn't be him since the first time we met, though. Which first time are you talking about? The generator in the cellar when you push me. Yeah. You can call me the administrator. No other humans are supposed to be here, though. I assume that's why you're wearing the mask. You don't want to be recognised. Correct. How many humans are there? Um, whoever you are, you also saved my life. On more than one occasion, really. Your presence here doesn't make any sense. You couldn't have come through the portal. The dragons would have noticed. That's where you are wrong. My arrival through the portal is what led the dragons to discover it in the first place. He was the first. Is that so? When I crawled out from the hole in the earth that hid the portal, there were no guards to discover me. My appearance exposed the portal, but the dragons didn't know it was there yet. So you arrived even before Reza. That makes you the actual first human to come to this world. That's more true than you might think. Who are you? I might have arrived through the portal like you, but my story is very different. Okay. Before the fall of humanity, I was an engineer. I was part of a team that was formed to create bioweapons. Our task was to create these bioweapons in a country where their development hadn't yet been regulated or outlawed. These weapons were planned to be a low-cost alternative for poor countries to wage war, and they would no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I was to set up the lab where our bioware development would take place. It was a clandestine operation, set to be in the middle of the wilderness. The laboratory was an independent research and living unit, and provided everything we needed without having to rely on external resources or even an existing power grid. Everything was to be teleported right into the middle of nowhere, with no traces of paper trail to follow, so international communities and law enforcement would have no idea of our operations. Our only connection to the outside world after setup would have been a two-way portal to headquarters, who would provide everything we would need. While we already could teleport individual people, teleporting a whole building was another matter entirely. Our solution was matter compression technology, incredibly expensive, but operating in the grey market was also very lucrative. The technology behind it was much more complicated than even teleportation, despite being based on it. While teleportation works by utilising black holes with a beginning and an end, compression technology relies on the loop, keeping matter in a sort of limbo state until the loop is broken. Working with black holes was very complicated to begin with, but this shape required much more finesse, and thus was much more expensive. I was to be sent alone to set up the lab and the portal so the rest of the team could arrive safely. In case you didn't know, it's possible to use a portal to send someone to a previously defined endpoint, therefore it's not required to have a portal at the destination to be sent there, but as you can imagine, this is also very dangerous. A single variable off by a fraction could mean the difference between landing safely or destination and smothering in space. Of course, my employer did not want anything like that to happen, not necessarily for my own sake, but because of all the unfavorably expensive equipment I had with me. Regardless, something went wrong anyway. Despite all their checks and safeguards, they could only minimize the risk so much. Even if the risk is a fraction of a fraction, sometimes you're just that unlucky. And sometimes, it turns out that your bad luck is a blessing in disguise. I arrived safely somewhere in the jungles of Earth, yet it was not the destination that had been planned. I knew something was off, but nevertheless, I set to work immediately. At the very least, I could prepare the building, I would have shelter, and then I could begin preparations for our project. Getting the portal into working order would take more time, as it was a complicated process that could take several weeks. If things had gone wrong, as I suspected, I would at least be able to establish contact with headquarters after the portal had been set up. 
and I'll be able to return. While teleporting the lab to the wrong location was certainly a costly mistake, I was still lucky to have my life. Before long, I discovered the truth about the place I had arrived. While I was still on Earth, it was not the Earth I knew. It was the Earth of 65 million years ago. We knew that by utilising black holes for teleportation, time travel was a theoretical possibility. It was something even my company didn't dare to attempt though, as teleportation in itself was still a very new technology. Yet here I was, 65 million years in the past, with a research station all to myself. The company would revel in the opportunity to study and profit from all the different life forms I could see, if only they knew about them. I spent a few weeks setting up the portal as planned, yet when I tried to re-establish contact with my employer, I was met with silence. Despite the time discrepancy, the portal should have been able to find my companies in the present. For a black hole, sending something through time is no different than sending something through space. However, when we built the portals, we gave them a specialised configuration. It was only possible to travel through space by aligning them across the time axis. That meant that I, in the past, would still be able to search for portals in the present to connect with. My counterparts in the present, though, would not be able to find me in the past even if they tried, but I couldn't find them, not a single one. Even after checking the portals for its function, I determined that for all intents and purposes, the portals from the company should have been there to connect with. Oh my god, it was loads of this. It was then that I had a terrible realisation. The portals in the present didn't exist anymore, or they were no longer operational. Maybe the blunder of teleporting the lab caused them to reconsider the risks of using the technology. After all, it was already controversial and had been outlawed in several countries. I wouldn't have been surprised if they decided to cut their losses, but it was highly unlikely that they would have immediately shut down every single portal and left me stranded without notice. Portal technology was still being relied on in several places in the present. In my mind, only one possibility remained, super weapons. Various nations had been using them as bargaining chips for some time. I didn't think the threats had become that serious, but one of them must have launched their weapon and destroyed the majority of Earth. What? It could have been the result of a malfunction, or perhaps the political situation had escalated. Either way, it was not possible for me to establish any means of communication to find out what had really happened. I could have sent myself back to the present with the right coordinates, but this was a risky endeavour, and I also had to ask myself if it was a present I wanted to return to. I was sure that if anything was even left of our world, the aftermath or a possible retaliatory strike would take care of the rest. In the end, I had to realise that whichever present that did exist was likely not the one that was worth returning to. It made my decision all the easier. Instead of returning to a destroyed civilization, I saw an opportunity. Rather than creating bioweapons, I could use the lab to create a new civilization based on my own ideals. While crazy man, I had all the necessary data and the most modern methods and machines at my fingertips. Besides, most of the processes had already been automated. In the end, I still used the lab for what it had been created for, fusing humans and animal DNA to create beings that were mostly animal but possessed a greater intelligence that allowed them to learn whatever we wanted them to. As I didn't have any animal samples sent with me when I initially arrived, I collected them from the sources available to me. Automated processes mixed the DNA further across the samples. New abilities were added, like enhanced armour, flight, and spit weapons to make new creatures more effective in combat. The result was a number of different species, each tailored and optimised to fill a specific role in a war situation. Hormones allowed me to speed up their growth, and with the lab's learning programme, they could be educated in whatever manner I saw fit. This is absolutely insane. Okay, so as a summary, this guy reckons he's gone back in time, grabbed lizards by the sound of it, and he's kind of made them into a, like a private army. And that's, that's, and they, they're not aware of it, or they are aware of it? I, I don't know. My first concern was self-sufficiency. They needed the kind of knowledge that would enable them to come together as their own independent society. Luckily, the AI that automated all the processes in the lab was more than helpful. I unleashed the first generation of my creation, and as their leader, founded our first village. I thought we could really put it off. Once I saw they could survive without my guidance, and also govern themselves, I knew my plan was a success. What? When I realised that the new society would eventually be destroyed, I told myself that I would do anything I could to save it. Destroyed? What are you talking about? Haven't you realised where we are? 
Okay, there's the word. The Chicxulub asteroid is headed for us. With a diameter of over 10 kilometers, its impact will create humongous clouds of dust, throwing Earth into a literal dark age. They will block out the sunlight for over a year, killing off many species and plants that rely on photosynthesis to survive. As a result, animals that eat those plants will also vanish, as will those who sought sustenance from the herbivores. All in all, 75% of all species will vanish, and in terrestrial ecosystems, all animals heavier than a single kilogram will die. That would be 2.2 pounds, <laughs> in case you need that conversion. Alright, cool. It will be the end of everyone who lives here, every single dragon you have seen, unless we do something. Wait, what am I supposed to do? Do you not wish to save him? I came here to help humanity. Now you tell me that this society, the whole world, is also on the brink of extinction. That's the truth. What kind of difference would a single person like me even make to save it? Right now, it's also a single person that presents its greatest threat. Reza. In order to stop the comet, we will need as much power as possible. We reclaimed all the generators he stole. Besides, how could a few of them still be enough to make a difference for something like this? Don't forget that Reza's still out there looking for more. The truth is, I don't know if all the generators we could gather would be ever be enough. We only require enough power to divert the comet's path during a crucial moment, and even if this plan is possible, we will need every single generator we can get. So my goal hasn't changed, I just need to find Reza. Yeah, but you'll need my help, and then maybe the help of others. You know that Reza's dangerous, and with his gun, he has a clear advantage. Don't think that he wouldn't hesitate to kill you if you were in his way. What do we do? Do you know where he is? No, but I think you'll find him soon, and you can count on my support when that happens. I see. There is one thing that still doesn't make sense to me though. The dragons have myths about you, but they don't know or remember you. They haven't seen any humans for who knows how long. How much time could have passed since you created them and how? How many generations could it take to forget? Why isn't there proof of your existence? I don't know exactly how long it's been myself. When I realised what time period I was in, that my creation was about to be wiped out in the future, I wanted to go to that future and see what they have become. Oh, he's a little time skipper, this one. I disabled the portal's time access safeguards and thus enabled it to connect with others in different times. This also included the very same portal in the future. With the generator of our lab being able to supply the portal with power for an indefinite amount of time, I was able to travel to any point in the future I wanted to. The entry and end point of the black hole would be the same place and same portal, with the way they travelled being just along the time axis. Since I could now search for connection points in any time period, I could look for my own portal in the future and pinpoint the moment its signal stopped. The comet, you gotcha. I found that specific point in time and travelled to a future that was close to that event as I could safely manage. After I arrived here, my escape from the portal's hiding place led to its discovery by the dragons. It and the laboratory were unearthed. I still don't understand how our portal found yours or why we ended up arriving at this particular time period. The portal you found was no doubt one of my companies. They must have been connected before, so the corresponding data for their connection already existed when you found it. I'm not sure if that could bypass the anti-time travel safeguards though. This is very, this is getting very thick with the whole time travel stuff. It gets really complicated to keep track of this stuff once it starts getting layered. So far we're okay, but it, it might, this might get worse. Was it completely operational when you found it? No, it took tinkering probably jump in the hardware safeguard in the process. Now, consider that connected portals travel on the same time axis together. The data for their beginning and end points are adjusted automatically, otherwise we wouldn't be able to transport anything from one place in the world to another without also sending it through time. Since these two portals must have been connected at some point, the corresponding data for the connection between these two portals already existed. When using the same connection without changing any of the data, this would mean that despite the time discrepancy between the two portals, time still progressed linearly for them. I'm not sure I get it. <laughs> Let me try and rephrase that. The portal you found and my own share a connection. However, while the connection is locked to a certain place, which is wherever the portal is at that very moment, it's not connected to a specific point in time. I still don't get it. For us and the physical machines that are the portals, time passes linearly and we can't do anything about that. However, for the black holes, this isn't the case. Just as their entry and endpoints can be in different places, they can also be in different times. In order not to send something through time, when we just want to transport something from one portal to another, 
The portals are anchored together in such a way that the time data is automatically synchronized. Essentially, this means that ever since you arrived in this world, the same amount of time has also passed where you came from. Okay, so despite being different time periods, time passes linearly on both sides of the portal. So if I've been here for a week, it's also gone a week over there as well. Otherwise, it would not have been possible for you to send messages back and forth. That makes sense. If they were not synchronized, the portals on both sides would stay connected not only to a single point in space, but also to a single point in time, thus making proper two-way communication impossible. However, this is only possible through the connection that has already been forged. If we wanted to, we could also use our portal to send you back to your own time period, but to a moment before Riza even arrived here. But that would mean that there would be two of me, wouldn't that cause a time paradox? I can only tell you that it would work. No one has studied time travel before though, so if there were any consequences, though I'm not sure of them, most likely an entirely new timeline would be created. There would be a timeline without an Ushio altogether, and in the new one, there would be two of you. What? This is becoming way too complicated. Have you ever played like Stain's Gate? That game is crazy for time travel theories. Alright, I apologise. To come back to your original question, I'm not sure how much time passed between the time I left and my newborn society and now. Since the portal was not designed for time travel, I've got no way of knowing how the variables translated to our perception of time. It could have been thousands or even millions of years. How could the portal or even the power source still be operational after all this time? The portal receives its power from the generator in the lab. These units were fitted with the absolute best technology we had to offer. It was designed to provide sustainable power completely independently from any already existing network or power lines. It gains energy from many sources, sun rays, earth's heat and movement, just to name a few. Keep in mind it had to power a whole laboratory and research station, while also providing the energy required for all of its inhabitants and the associated energy expenditures. Taking its power from Earth itself, a generator like this could continue providing power to the lab indefinitely. Speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single dinosaur since I arrived? It seems that the Dragon Society expanded over the whole continent. Many still hunt on their own for sustenance, and as such, the original species they were based on have mostly vanished. As in direct competition, ours proved to be far superior. Also, they've probably taken measures against having big predators roam their cities and villages. Yet while the dragon population has increased tremendously, i found that by and large their society as a whole has not changed much. Is that why everything looks familiar and as though it was made by humans? I suppose so. The learning program I initially used gave them knowledge about things and how to create them, yet of course those were only human inventions and designs. Did they never once stop to think that they should adjust how certain things look? A lot of furniture and objects I've seen look very impractical for a dragon. I was surprised at that too, but I have an explanation of this phenomenon, deviant art. Don't forget that their genome was designed by an AI program to make them into effective bioweapons. The idea was to have them indoctrinated at a young age. This is getting creepy, alright. After reaching adolescence, their learning capacity would be greatly diminished. This resulted in subjects that would stay loyal and be unlikely to change their desired behaviours. Instincts also play a role. I imagine they are very much at odds with their learned behaviour. Instincts in animals never change, and instinctual behaviours will always be there. If a given trait has been programmed into their genome as an instinct, it's not very likely to change, even through numerous generations. We can see the result of this here. While I initially made them learn certain sets of values and knowledge, I found that the expression of those ideas has hardly changed. And after I was gone, each new generation learned from its elders, and much of the initial knowledge and information was retained through all this time. Their genome as a whole did change, however, which was unavoidable. If they had been used bioweapons as intended, they would have been nothing more than an army of identical clones. While I can see subtle changes in behaviours as a result, some traits are still very much present in them. They are content with what they have and don't strive for more. They don't innovate or change, so technological breakthroughs or new inventions are a rarity. It's quite the opposite, really. They very much value tradition and their ways which have not changed much in all these years. This is so fucking weird. Okay, so he's saying that their peaceful lifestyle is good because they're not willing to take on new ideas. Is this, is this what we're saying? I'm not sure if this is the correct answer. Okay, 
I see. What? How much time do we have? Yeah, brushing all that aside, how much time do we even have left to stop the comet? Weeks. The comet will pass the moon, and its gravity field will point the comet's trajectory toward the Earth. This is when we need to be ready. If we strike then, we only need to minimally affect its path in order for the comet to pass Earth safely. It won't be enough for the inhabitants of this world to prepare if Riza steals our greatest assets. So it's all about Riza and the generators, isn't it? Why does he want to destroy the Earth? Indeed. By the way, I fixed the portal in case we need to use it. Did you break it to prevent me from being sent away? No, that won't me. Riza better not use it to escape. Trust me, the portal is our greatest asset. I've programmed it with emergency coordinates. If you should find yourself in a hopeless situation and feel there's no other way out, go to the portal. I've made sure only you will be able to use them. I'll keep that in mind. So, what's your plan? What do we do now? I will resume my work and you will continue yours. Find Reza. Okay, turn to leave. Wait, what's with all the secrecy? Why are you still wearing that mask? Why don't we pull our resources together and you show me your hideout? Don't you think it would be better if you were completely frank? No. <laughs> Fine, bye. A second later, the figure had already vanished into the darkness outside. When I followed, I realised that I wasn't sure how to get back to my apartment. Surrounded by trees and the blanket of night, it was hard to make out where I stood. Head for the lights. After wandering through the underbrush, I realised that the lights on the horizon had to be coming from the village and I made my way back. I returned to my apartment without much trouble. When I looked at the clock, I was surprised to see how much time had passed. Not having anything left to do for the day, I soon fell into a deep slumber. <laughs>